me and pretty much everyone else here, we don't have a really a lot of just like time downtime. It's, it's there's a lot of activity, and you know I can see that there's has been the thought in my mind like I need time to like I want to read, I just want to be in stillness or whatever, and it just kind of seems like there are it's oftentimes stretches of days where it just that just doesn't come in, you know, and and so it's like this idea in my mind. I could see how it's playing out like this idea of sacrifice or resisting then when I would be called upon to do something. And I can even see this thought in my mind like, well, if I'm just really, you know, if I'm really in my function, then somehow I will be rewarded later on. Well, I will have like a hermitage or whatever. I think what I'm starting to realize, somehow dividing it up into like my time with the Holy Spirit, let's just say, and the time with the task is actually the same thing. Like whether it seems that I'm active or, or, or I'm not, I can, I can see that. Like I really have this hierarchy or meaning placed on the activity, I guess, or? Yeah, it's very common. My friend Dorothy and I used to talk about that because remember, anything that involves duality is part of the ego's defense mechanism. So. That, you're describing a very common thing, my time, their time. Oftentimes people talk about it because they believe they have to work for a living. That's their time. I'm on the clock and I'm at the, at the job, whether it's you work out of home or there, it's, it's a division in the mind, my time, their time. Or my, even, even in relationships, my time, your time. You know, okay, we'll do this on your time, but on my time you have to do what I want. And it's ver many variations of it. And it's, it's truly, there's no joy in that perception. And, and I would say that uh, I experimented with that a lot too, because that was one of those dichotomies early on for me where it was like, okay, I'll, I'll do this, 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 and I'll be used and used and used. And then, then I'll get, when it's time to relax, one beer stands clear, Miller beer. You know, it's, it's all these ads that we see in the football games, you know, which is all about, like, taking your time. Like, you worked hard, you know, and now it's time to have some my time, you know, to relax. It's so deeply ingrained. And even when you get into spirituality, instead of my time, their time, now it's my time and Holy Spirit's time. You know, like, is that enough? Did I do enough? Is that enough? You know, there's still, like, there's something above that's wa watching or counting. The funny thing was, I'd be being used in many ways, and then when I would have what I call downtime or relaxed time or this and this, then the monkey mind was, was really gone. I mean, I just wanted to be still, and the body got still, and the body could slow the breath down and get in a posture and and then you know it was like it felt even more unproductive and I'm sure Ramana Maharshi had to go through this you know it's great in the later part of his life he was just this radiant glowing being but but if you read the whole story of his life he started off when he was 19 left his family his brother behind went to Arunachala and basically moved around there other kids threw rocks at him. He would try to go to these old, um, like, sacred sites or temples or whatever and just try to hide, kind of be out of the way so he could just meditate without getting rocks thrown at him. I mean, kids would find him and they'd throw rocks at him, this and this. He went through a lot of things for decades trying to still the mind. And A Course in Miracles is just a different path than that. It's just saying, you know, your way will be different. You know, a holy relationship is given you. Um, you'll be a miracle. I'm going to train you to be a miracle worker. This will be a way of saving time. You know, anybody who works with the Course knows that it's about time collapse. And it's about speeding things up instead of long periods of meditation, contemplation, and so forth. So, you just start to be honest with yourself and you watch your mind try to shift from spirit time and or spirit time as a reward thinking that you're doing the work and then you're going to get the reward with spirit time and I, th I think if you just follow you'll notice that you know Suzanne and I were talking about this where we were saying like um, 
well, it's beautiful with such a small retreat and everything, you know, it just gives a spaciousness to watch your mind very closely and to not get caught into the do, do, do. We had that the other day, it was the 21st, the last day of the Piscean Age, where everything, I mean, the bird was hammering up on the, the house, it's still doing it, of course, but that and then the, the water froze over to Suzanne where she was, Angel's Landing, and the van got stuck, and it just was all those things that were happening, and it was just an opportunity to, to pause and to just see the world as it really is and not think, not get caught up into, oh, I've got a bad day because all these things are going wrong. What would you expect on the last day of the Piscean Age? I'm an Aquarian, and this is my age, and this is the first day. Is today the first day or the second yes. day? Today's the first day of my, of my age, so to speak. And I've been celebrating it, and I was just celebrating the, you know, it's a, it's a dawning, really, of a, a new state of mind. That's what the, the 12, 12, 12 was the gateway, where it was just saying, here we go, we're going into, uh, yeah, a new, a new way of, of living. But for me, I'm just celebrating those kind of symbols, which is getting away from that my time, their time.